This is part six of the DIY 12 volt lithium ion battery bank. Uh, this is the final part, and uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of uses for this, and then I'm going to go over my final thoughts of it, maybe some things that I'd do differently, uh, just stuff like that. So, first off, I, I'll just go over the outputs one more time. If you got this main connector over here, which is meant for charging as well as running this inverter. Uh, that has no protection circuit on it. This one does have a protection circuit on it, and that's uh, controlled by the switch over here. Uh, we also have lights. And in the front, we have the inverter with a couple of 110 volt outputs and a USB port. So, we'll go ahead and start just plugging stuff into this. We'll Put it this way. And this is uh, one nice thing about having the 110 volt outlets on the front of it. You don't have to worry too much about uh, different chargers. So for example, I can plug in a laptop or uh, a Chromebook in this case. Alright, since we got a USB port on the front of this thing, we can plug that in and we can charge a cell phone or a power bank. Here, charging 2%. We can also hook up something to this connector back here, which I'll go ahead and grab something to hook up to that real quick. Alright, I found a little 12 volt device we can run off of this. This is a little Peltier cooler, which, uh, these pull a fair amount of current, which is kind of why I chose this. Uh, but I've got fans underneath these uh, little heat sinks here, which are actually 5 volt fans. So, I'm going to power them off of USB. Uh, but I only have the one port on here, and my phone's pretty much dead. So, I would like to get that charged up. So, it's pretty simple to add another USB port to the system. You just grab a wall charger, you plug it in there, and you notice your fans come on. So now, if I hit this main switch back here, you'll see the green LED comes on. If I actually grab a thermometer, you can see the top of that thing is down to about 24 degrees Fahrenheit, 22. There you go on Celsius there, about negative 9. It's actually still dropping there, we're about... 8 degrees Fahrenheit there, which is negative 12 Celsius, so definitely provides that thing with enough power there. So anyhow, just to recap, I've got, oh yeah, and we can also turn on lights if we need those. So just to recap on this, I've got fans running off of a secondary USB charger that I've just plugged straight into the inverter because that works quite well. I've got the laptop charging over here, or these little schools, Chromebook, anyway. Uh, phone's charging, and I've got a Peltier unit for no particular reason, and uh, some lights. So, anyhow, that should give you some idea of what you can run with this sort of a little system here. Uh, of course, this inverter can put out about 300 watts, which this battery bank should be able to keep up with that just fine. Uh, as I did in part two of this video when I was doing the testing, I did pull about 250 watts out of the battery bank and it worked flawlessly. Uh, though it didn't last very long, of course you wouldn't expect that because I believe this was 17.6 uh, amp hours, if I remember correctly. So, it's not a huge capacity battery bank, but uh, $20 worth of batteries, some little bit of money in the electronics, and a decent bit of time has turned into this thing. So, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and that's actually already getting ice on the top of it. That's kind of neat. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, take get some of this stuff out of here. Alright, so let's go ahead and start the conclusion part of this video. Uh, First off, a couple things that I might have changed a little bit. Uh, I would have probably put a fuse 
on the switch connector here, uh, just in case something went wrong on that. This one I'm actually not too concerned about because I don't think I'm ever going to plug that into something that's going to have any issues with that. Because uh, it's either just going to be hooked up to the charger or the inverter, so I'm not too worried about that. And I'm trying to keep the voltage drop as little as possible on that main switch there. Um, I would have made the case just a little bit bigger because it was actually kind of a tight fit getting all the circuitry inside of it. And it also would have gave me a little bit more room for a fuse. <laughs> so, uh, a little thing that you might want to do is actually use the fused LEDs. Uh, because they are actually quite uh, bright if you stare right at them. Uh, both of those are, both the green and the red. So, that's just a little thing right there. I kind of like the really bright looking LEDs, but uh, some people might want to use the diffused ones. Yeah, so, anyhow, other than that, I like the, uh, the way that I have these connectors set up. Uh, I probably could have done a bit of a better job labeling stuff. Um, just so it's not so crooked and terrible looking. Uh, the side of this here could also be a little bit better. And one big thing that uh, would have helped out a lot is printing this in PLA instead of ABS, but I don't have any black PLA on me right now, so I just went ahead and printed it in ABS. And it, I mean, it came out okay. It's just, it's a little warped. Can't really tell with all the stuff on it now, though, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and really, you don't even need to 3D print a case like this because it is so simple. Um, just because uh, really all you have to do is drill a couple holes and maybe do some filing to get the connectors through. And that's about it. Just get a, a big enough project case to fit your batteries into. It would probably be a lot quicker, but uh, I, I do like making use of my 3D printer. And the plastic for those things is really pretty cheap. So... Anyhow, a couple ideas for uh, uses of this thing, as I've already mentioned, charging stuff, that's a big thing, like, uh, I mean, if you take this with you traveling, I mean, it's kind of bulky, but you should be able to charge a decent laptop off of this a few times, and who knows how many times with the phone. Uh, one more thing, I might have uh, put, like, a cigarette lighter output on this as well somewhere, uh, but I'm not too concerned about that because I can probably make some kind of adapter to go to from XT60 to cigarette lighter socket. So, um, anyhow, other than that, this will make a really nice high current power supply for just random projects that need 12 volts or just testing things like that little Pelter unit just to mess around with it. Uh, all right. Yeah, other other uses for this, uh, of course, if the power goes out, you got a really nice light to be able to see by, as well as you can plug stuff in. You might want to run a, a desk lamp or something like that, uh, just besides the LEDs that are on that. Or, like I said, you can run just about anything that uh, isn't going to mind that it's running off a modified sine wave inverter up to about 300 watts. So. Uh, Anyhow, another note, the switch connector I'm rating at 15 amps. They can probably push 20, uh, but don't want to push it too hard. Uh, the wires in there aren't exactly thick for this connector, so I don't really think I'll ever have to push too much more than 15 amps through that connector anyway. This main connector can just take however much, uh, probably about 30 amps, uh, as much as the battery bank will allow you to take. Uh, which these lithium ion laptop batteries probably aren't really meant to uh, be discharged too fast. So, like I said, 30 amps should be fine. Uh, it's 10 gauge cable going all the way up there. That's probably another thing that I'd like to do differently. If I did this again, I'd use a little bit less stiff uh, 10 gauge cable. Uh, so, other than that, it does take a while to charge. Uh, I have a little. 5 amp lithium ion or lithium polymer technically uh, but balanced charger for RC car batteries which works fairly well on this it just takes a while uh, so anyhow that is finally the end of this project I hope you enjoyed the build maybe you found it useful 
Uh, maybe you like to try it for yourself if you can find some cheap laptop batteries. That's another thing. I went back and I looked at these batteries that I got for this thing. Um, I think they're about ten bucks uh, originally, but uh, now they're back up to about twenty. So not such a good deal anymore. But when these batteries were purchased, they uh, should have been a fairly good deal on them anyway. I think I don't know. I got them as a Christmas present. Uh, they're on an Amazon wish list, so I think. That's about all I have to say about this thing. Uh, there might be a part 7 to this, and that's only if I decide to get a couple more of these batteries and I'm going to make another one of these units that I can hook in parallel with this one. So, anyhow, there could be a part 7. That's uh, kind of a major if right now. But, uh, anyhow, that ends the 12 volt lithium ion battery pack project. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. That's it for now guys. Bye.